I hope you're doing well. I've got yet another conversation for you this week. Um, I'm joined by Helena Roth, the gentle rebel behind Tankispion. Dot com. Um, and yes, you may well be thinking, uh, yeah, what's Tank is Beyond? Um, th- there isn't necessarily a really concrete definition. In fact, I think that's one of the things that makes it beautiful. Um, but as you listen to our conversation, it, it should begin to, uh, to take root and to make a bit more sense. Um, Helena has been on a long journey towards inner gentleness. Uh, this is the, the kind of the frame on which she uh, she puts this this idea of Tankus Beyond. She describes um, the place that she's reached today as gentle with an edge. Um, and yeah, this this really resonated strongly with me when I first uh, came across her, which was on I think it was on Twitter. And so these words that were coming up really, uh, really spoke to me. And I thought, oh, I'd love to have a conversation with Helena at some point. Um, and she talks about, you know, gentleness pretty much being the only effective response to the harsh internal dialogue, which she describes as a mashup of, of in, inner kind of Hitler, Mao and Stalin. Um, and she, she says, you, you do gentle, then you add the edge. And for her, that is the Tankist Bjarn. That's what the Tankist Bjarn is, which is a a descriptive rather than prescriptive thing, which is another uh, thing that really, really resonated with me. Um, you know, as like I, uh, she she takes a descriptive rather than prescriptive approach to her writing, to her coaching, to her uh, to her creativity and and training and all that stuff, rather than providing uh, or focusing on some kind of one size fits all uh, solution or blueprint or model. Um, to, to kind of, I guess, trust the process of, you know, of essentially this, this idea of Tankish Bjarn is, is a description of something that we all experience. It's found in the, the opening or the invitation to experience some kind of shift. It's that moment of, oh, something else, something new has just kind of popped its head into my, uh, I, I guess, my realm of perspective. Uh, it's not an enforced thing from an external source. It's not like a deliberate teaching, but it's this kind of inner electric surge, this this ignition of something, this new possibility, this perspective shift that is seeded in some way. And you, you kind of, she, uh, Helena, Helena says, you, you, you when you're faced with Tankish Beyond, there's a, there's a choice to step away from the possibility or to step into it. Um, but it sure is hard to forget about that door leading to the unknown, the knowledge of which will, once revealed, always stay with you, even if you choose to let the door slam shut without entering. Um, and she also says that what is tankish beyond for one might not be for another. They aren't necessarily universal or general, but rather personal and specific. What makes me go, huh, might not even cause the slightest ripple within you and vice versa. I really, yeah, yeah, I, it's, I really love uh, you know, it can be frustrating at times for people, but I really, really love ideas and concepts that are difficult to pin down, to, to define. Um, and when I hear her discussing this idea of Tankus Beyond, I, I know <laughs> that I've experienced it over and over in my life. And it's kind of nice to, to be able to put a name to it, even if you can't put a distinct concrete definition on it. So, yeah, I will I will leave it there and I'll I hope that you enjoy the conversation. I'll be back again afterwards just to sort of tie up the loose ends and to say goodbye um properly. I think what would be lovely is to start with finding out what Tankispian is um, and hearing maybe what it is for you this week. <laughs> That's a good question. So Tankispian, it's my life philosophy that I lived for... 13 years before knowing that there was a word for it that was Tankespian. Um, and it is, for me, the, the general, if I look kind of, you know, top level, what is Tankespian? For me, it is 
when I hear, see, read, experience something that makes my brain go, what? You know, it's like, it's that twisting, turning where it's just, and it, and it doesn't have to be words. It can be a painting. I had a friend make this lovely painting of fish. And, you know, it's like, I couldn't see what it was. I had to like, look at it. And then once I saw it, it was like, oh, now I see what it is. So that was a visual tanker spell, right? Mm. Um, and this week, I've been getting a lot of Tankespian from connecting dots. Um, and it's, it's, it's like where I, you know, it's like the Tankespian, it is that edge thing. It is that, oh, you know, it's like, which way is it going to fall? And I'm, am I going to hurt myself? while I'm walking oh. along this edge, right? It is that. And and then when there's like, you know, I see a dot connected, I go, huh, there you go. And it just kind of clears up. There's a clarity to it that can, you know, okay, now I can breathe a bit more. And then I go, oh, but what about this one? Mm -hmm. um, so I've been having some Moments like that, when it comes to what I do, how I do it, um, why I do it, um, tweaking, going, okay, I'll do it this way. And then like getting my Caspian is great at asking me things that just makes me go, hey, wait, I'm doing this, but is it serving me? Is it, is it providing, you know? Kind of is it value adding the amount of time, effort, energy I put into it? What am I getting out of it? Just a little question might go, mm. Mm. hey, what if? Um, so there's been a lot yeah. of that this week. Mm. And is there do you does do you get any sense of like resolution to tankish beyond? Is it yes? Yeah. Yes. It is not. I mean I say that I'm addicted to it and I kind of am. I I crave thank you. I crave these like, hey, how, what, what are you saying? I don't get it. Or, you know, trying to do a yoga pose and my body just says, What do you think I could do this? You know. But but there is a resolution to it. And then there's a rest. So it's a little bit, you know, it would be like flexing your muscle. You know, if you're if you're static in that, there's no flexibility and there's actually no strength. You can't do anything with it. It's just a statically contracted muscle, mm. right? You need to let it relax. Mm. Um, so it's a yeah. very organic concept for me. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, where did it? Is it is it something that you? Because I know it's like two words merged into one, isn't it? Was was that your merging of no, those words? No, it wasn't. I saw it in a tweet in 2013. Um, a lady in the school, uh, sort of school Twitter. The Swedish school Twitter is a is a very distinct part of the Swedish Twitter verse. She wrote to somebody else that she was so grateful for the tankespian she got. And I just went, whoa, that word. <laughs> so ever since, it's my word, you yeah. know. So if you if you Google right now, if you Google it, you'll mostly just get me. But mm -hmm. but if you sort of scroll past me, it is people that I know, people that I have talked to and contacted and you yeah. know so i'm i am a spreader yeah um, i'm kind of a super spreader i think <laughs> for good or worse yeah. you know yeah that's why i was curious because yeah it's it's your results just come up kind of yeah. searching for it so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. and I'd, I'd love to know more about the the swedish you know the the cause you say that's that's something great about the swedish language is the merging of words like yeah what does that yeah. look like so it it actually I was recording a podcast this this morning and I was speaking about the the very lovely word mellan mellan is in between 
mänskligt is human. So right. that which is in between human. And in Swedish, it's one word. And it's a perfect word, right? In English, you have to use a lot of words to get to it. Mm. I'm guessing German might be similar, that you could probably add two words together in German too. Yeah. Um, so tanke is thought, and spia means to brace against. So tanke spia. So that's a funny question, actually, because... I was, I had a, I had my coach Dave a couple of years ago and he's from the UK too. And I asked him, you know, how would you translate Tankespia? And I explained what it is and how I see it and everything. And he said, I translate it into Tankespia. Yeah. And I went, ha, huh, that's a great idea. So that was like when I said, okay, I'll not make up an English word for it. It's already a made up word. Why not just go with that one? Mm. Um, That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, lo I love, um, cause you, you say that it's not necessarily universal or general um, and it's different for everybody. But, and when I was reading that, I was, I was like, I think the fact that it's different for everybody almost makes it universal um, in itself because it's, it's like, there's no, there's no division. There's no sense of like, this is what it is. And you either, no. you either get it or you don't. It's like, this is what it is. And you will have got it in your own way. Like it's way. something that, yeah. 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 Everybody yeah. Kind of has an experience yeah. of. It's a bit like love in some ways. Like yeah, you know, everybody experiences it differently, but you kind of have an idea of what it means when you hear the word. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, that's kind of one of the things that I really appreciate with Tanki Spian as a concept because it's such a it's an umbrella concept for me i can put so many things sort of that fit under the umbrella oh excellent thank you you know various concepts of various people um around the globe and it's just like oh that's perfect thank you so it it doesn't feel like it's like it's small or or um excluding things yeah. it's rather very it's it's like very fluid i could i i can fit anything under the umbrella of tank Espion, you know maybe i'll need a minute but i can fit, <laughs> fit it in um for sure yeah. that's cool yeah um and you talk about gentleness as well uh quite a lot yeah. um and yeah. gentle with an edge being yeah sort of yeah. that's the who you are what you're doing tank yeah, Espion, yeah. Yeah. So, how how does gentleness fit into your life and things? So, I wouldn't. I we wouldn't be having this conversation if I hadn't learned how to do gentle. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't know I could do gentle. I didn't know that that was an option until sometime two thousand six seven. Um, in a in a session with a therapist where for various reasons I didn't bring cash to pay her and I came in to her and I was so ashamed and I was you know I was beating up on myself verbally in front of her feeling so ashamed that I was so disrespectful and she looked at me and was like you're so hard on yourself and and that was when that was a question that was tankespian for me because I went, I don't have to be, you know, is, is it an option not to be? She said, well, yeah, I just say that I'll bring twice the cash next time. And I just went, what? You, can, you know, it doesn't have to be harder than that. Right. So I was, let's see, I was 33, four. 34 35 when i when when that happened yeah so since then i've learned how to do gentle and i've i've experimented with it i've had the help of of um, therapists and coaches and friends and a mastermind group i've been blogging a lot about it etc and gradually i've come to a place where it is by far, it's it's my default state. 
I don't have the harsh voices within anymore. They have like left the building because it's like, it's kind of boring to hang with me because I just do not engage with them anymore. So they left the building and I have this um, gentle uh, way of being with myself. And the edge is what makes it thrilling, right? So that is Tankispia. It is when I am gentle with myself. You can challenge me. You can, I, I get to try things out and, you know, fail miserably and go, oh, wow, that was so thrilling. I learned so much. You know, my old me would have been terrified of trying something new out. And if I did and I failed miserably, I would beat myself up relentlessly. Mm-hmm. You know, how could you be so dumb? Why did you? You should have known. Yada, yada, yada. You know, which I think is very, very common voices with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so the, yeah. the, the gentleness is, it's like the foundation that the Tankaspian can really take off on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and got like an image of a, like a shock absorber type thing with the gentleness where and and within a a wide margin so you know events or experiences or you know things that happen just bounce like get absorbed into the shock absorber and then bounce out in a in a way that's not harsh or yeah yeah, like yeah jarring i suppose yeah yeah yeah, precisely Mm. which 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 means that when I come across, you know, situations that that are inherently tough or um, scary or you know anxiety driving or or whatever it is, I that shock absorber is is a great way for me to not waste energy on the wrong things, on things that don't really serve. Right? Mm. It's like oh. It's there, and then I can use my energy in ways that serves me mm. and others. Mm. Um, yeah. What what kind of drives you in that respect? In terms of you talk about serving you and serving others, like what's the driving force? Is it's like it's kind of embarrassing, right? But I've lived my life with inner dictators, you know, a very harsh inner voice. Being me then was not so fun. Since I've gotten those dictators to to kind of leave the building, being gentle with myself, loving the edge of Tankespian, it is absolutely amazing to be me. Mm. You know, I love living life. And I'm not on a quest to make everybody live life as Helena, right? That would be absolutely bonkers. But to see that there is a possibility to shift from having a very, very harsh inner dialogue to something completely different is something that I think everybody, most everybody, actually really has a need for. There's an epidemic of harshness that is global. We speak harshly towards ourselves. You know, 90% or at least 95% of everybody does. And we don't have to, you know. It's not that I'm, you know, gentle in such a way that I'm stagnant, I'm in stasis, I'm not doing anything, I'm just kind of flopping around on a pink fluffy cloud. You know, not that, but rather I'm gentle in that, like you say, I have the shock absorber so that whatever I face, you know, I'm I'm quite fast on the rebound. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't waste a lot of time and energy on on being in that spot where it's where nothing really happens, if I can say that. I don't know that that makes sense, but it's, 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 um, that is what I want to share. I want to share Tankispia. Yeah. Because I want to receive Tankispia, right? 
So that's one thing. But by and large, it is the doing gentle thing that that really is the foundation for me being able to give and receive thank you. Yeah. So sharing myself, I use myself as my foremost tool in a sense. You know, I share stories of what it's been like having these voices within and what I've done with it, not in a prescriptive way, but in a descriptive way. You know, you can you can listen to it, read it and hear it and maybe go, huh, I wonder what I could try that might. And then you're on, you know, then you've started that journey. Yeah. Yeah. I made a note of how you'd written that, the not prescriptive but descriptive in your work. And that really speaks to me as what like it's it's definitely my kind of approach to things um in sharing whatever i share not as a way to tell you to do what i did because like this is the way to make it work but to as you 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 kind of wrote it's to kind of inspire you almost to be free to realize okay there's another way or there there's the the current trajectory that i'm on or the current way of doing things or the mindset that I have right now isn't the ultimate truth. There exactly. might be something else that I can find. Um, and it, that doesn't mean I need to follow Andy, Andy's truth, because that's not my truth. Like whatever that truth means. Um, yeah. I like that. Yeah. No, I mean, that's what my, my therapist said as well. You know, she said I would have mm. brought you know, twice the money next time. She didn't say you should. Yeah. Big difference. That's Big really difference. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just thinking because it makes me realize that I've come on Twitter again since a couple of months back and I see that it's filled with a lot of statements. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is truth statements and I go you know wordings there's there's a certainty to these statements that just makes me go you know it's like well but no (laughs) right it's like what if and this and that and the other things and and I think that is part of why I react to it that so many of those statements are written in a way that they are at least very easily perceived as prescriptive. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's like, mm, so. in China, you know, it chafes. It's, it doesn't really sit well with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a, it's a really good observation. I'm really glad you did come back onto Twitter. <laughs> um, otherwise we wouldn't have met. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, the, I, I did a um, an episode of the podcast a little while ago about something exactly like that, which was, one of these, one of these statements that said, um, "If you're, if you're not, basically, if you're not cringing, or what was the word? Um, essentially, if you're not cringing every time you look at old work, then you're not growing." Um, and underneath it was there was loads of people like, "Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, I hate, I hate my own work. Like, if I'm, and all of this stuff, I'm like." Oh man, like in terms of the opposite of gentleness, the opposite of that, that sense of self-compassion and being able to, you know, move like through the waves of life, like with that space and that margin and that expanse, like that's the complete opposite of that. Like that's a terrible relationship with yourself at all stages, because, you know, even in the future, you're now going to be cringing at the you of now who's made that statement. <laughs> and there's mm. never a sense of, of peace. There's never a sense of, yeah. And you disregard the growth. It's like, I have this, you know, I, I, I have like 2,500 plus blog posts to my name um, starting, well, basically starting 2013, right? So that's a lot. I have... I have busy. a brain that works weirdly. <laughs> so I remember a lot of them. So I, I reference to old blog posts all the time, right? Mm-hmm. But doing that gives me reason to revisit old blog posts. 
And it's great fun. I love doing that because I get to go with my doing gentle in the bottom. I get to go, oh, man, that's so interesting. I thought that I've written that. Hmm, I wouldn't write that today, you know, but not, oh, shit. I wrote that. I shouldn't have. uh, I don't think that today. Totally different energy to it. Yeah. Uh, So just being in this is like I stand for it in the sense that I've written it. I did believe that. I did think that back then. And that's, you know, that was me. That does not mean I think the same today. That's something completely different. But I don't have to bash myself for having grown. Yeah. Because that's essentially what you would be doing, bashing yourself for not knowing then what you know now. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Shouldn't I instead be grateful that I know now what I know now? Yeah. Really, yeah. really weird. I know. Yeah. I mean, I, grimacing was the word, not cringing. Um, if you're not grimacing every time you, and it's that, yeah, it's just, oh. Um, but yeah, exactly. Like I, I, and I think it gives a good insight into how we hold one another as well. Being able to, you know, like I, I read things that I've, that I wrote years ago and I'm like, I'm not sure I even understand what that means. There was obviously something going on in, on my, in, in, my, in my head that meant I wrote it, but I can't, I can't access that, that part of my mind that kind of made sense of that. Um, and in terms of what that then gives me in the present is the ability maybe to have more compassion or, or empathy with people saying things that I'm like, Oh, I'm not sure I get that. Or, and as you say, those statements on Twitter that just constantly bombarding us with these, it's, it, they come across as like objective, like I'm making an objectively true statement. Yeah. Um, and it's like, well, what about if you look at it from this perspective or like, how, like what if that bit's not true? How does that change it? Um, and actually, you know, the world is really nuanced and complex yeah. and gray yeah. and that's, the beauty of it yeah. um and it's one of the things i really love about so in my um in my commu- online community um we will have conversations around you know i'll i'll share an idea that's been on my mind and then someone will kind of respond to it with a slightly different angle and you're like oh yeah i've not thought about it like that and the implications of yeah if if i go all the way through with my kind of reading of this situation then I'm neglecting this other thing that you've picked up on. And, and actually I really like if we can learn to value that rather than be defensive and offended by it, like I think it, it's really, really helpful and, and constructive. And we live in a, in a culture where certainty is rewarded. Mm. Certainty is lauded as this is what you should do. You should be certain. You should know you should, you know, yes. This is it. Rather than, I actually don't know. You know, it's like, oh, no, don't use that combination of words. We don't want that. It's like, you need to know, not not know. Mm. And and I I grew up um, with a belief that my worth was in me knowing. So I've I've been jokingly called Encyclopedia Hellenica um, because, you know, it's like, yeah, well, I know uh, all the knowledge, right? Which had me and and occasional still does have me saying, you say a name or, you know, reference a a book or, you know, musical group or whatever. And I'll go, oh, yeah. Having no clue. Yeah. Right? (laughs) Because I believe that that was where my worth was. I had to know if I said, I have never heard of this, that I would not be of value anymore. Mm. So I've been working a lot with that. And it's still still so top of mind that I I notice when I say, I have no clue. Mm. I don't know. Um. And that's but a part I do. of gentleness, isn't I, it? That, yes, and I do say that. I say I've probably said that more in the past ten years than than you know the forty years I've lived before that. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, That's, that is interesting. Yeah, so it's like um, certainty, the, the kind of other side of the coin of certainty is, is anxiety. And I don't think there's, it, it's no, like, I don't know, no shock that the more we prize certainty, like in our modern world, everything's got to be certain, the higher the level of anxiety is becoming in individuals. And you get it as a collective, like it, you can just yeah. feel it as a collective yeah. like this. Yeah this deep anxiety that is, is really, yeah, permeating through. Um, but the em, embracing yeah. uncertainty, it, like sounds ridiculous, but it's so freeing. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. It's like anything is possible there. There's a great quote um, by Milton Glaser, who's a, a designer, um he said it or i've heard it on uh, jonathan fields podcast the good life project yeah so milton glaser says to create the new requires no certain he says certainty is a closing of the mind to create the new requires doubt mm. and i just go oh that's just lovely because certainty mm. is just that it yeah. closes you in. This is the answer. Yes, exactly. Right? It's like, well, what about the rest? Yeah. Um, you know, there's so much more. And 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 it's interesting because I think our scientific focus or um infatuation or whatever you would call it is 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 driving also that certainty. Everything has to be scientific. Well, mm. Science is a method for thinking things through, you know. Yeah. That's it what has, it is. It's and not it also has, truth. <laughs> exactly. And it has uncertainty. If you're going, like, if you're taking a proper scientific approach, uncertainty is is through the, the is. veins of it. Yeah. And science is a method of, of exploration, in a sense. Yeah. That is is riddled with limitations and and like rules on conduct, etc. Which means it is not the only way to to investigate things. It is one way to investigate the or within it there might be many ways, but outside of it, there's other things that maybe aren't really fit for being investigated using yeah. a scientific method, etc. So it's like it has become this end all be all. Here it is. If if it has science written on it, yes, we mm. can be certain it's the truth. Yeah. <sighs> or <Yeah>. not. <laughs> you no, know? or not. Yeah. Exactly. Hold lightly. Um <laughs> Mm. that's a good way to do it. it's like yeah i can hold that here mm. and what has been proven scientifically is now given what we know given the ways of measurements and instrumentation and and reasoning that we have access to now or our ability to ask questions this is what we've come to see. This holds true now, given all of that. Tomorrow, who knows? Yeah. Right? Who knows? Yeah. It's, it's so, so, so this written stone type uh, belief of, of science being truth is just, it is so fascinating. And, and I think you're right. It is a, it's probably a, um, you know, I don't know whether the, you know, what's the hen and what's the egg and which came first when it comes to the certainty and the anxiety, but they sure drive each other. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, you. it's almost like we we then search to relinquish the anxiety by finding more certainty. And by finding more certainty, the anxiety that we don't, we can't know everything. No, then, rises. Yeah. yeah. And they're just sort of rubbing each other, <laughs> rising. Yeah. yeah. And as you say, that that idea of of just breaking that cycle by saying, I don't actually know, can be so freeing. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and you know, today I can say it with much less effort, pain, discomfort. You know, it's like I've said it enough that it comes quite naturally. You know, mm. it's like I don't put as much meaning on it as I used to. It used to mean you are rubbish, Helena. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Now it means you don't know everything, Helena. And I go, yeah, I know I don't. It's great. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I suppose, yeah, when kind of the people around you, when you're the encyclopedia, when, or and especially when you f feel like you have to know everything and you have to let everybody know that you know everything, it, can make you a, quite a frustrating person to be around as well, can't it? Not very nice at all, I would yeah. say. Not very nice at all. It's interesting. I, d I always find it interesting that the things we do in an effort to alleviate some pain, and actually we yeah. tend to create more of the pain yeah. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the road we go down yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. All of that, again, for me, leads me back to this epidemic of harshness that I speak about. So if, if I hadn't learned how to do gentle, finding out all of the things I found out about myself would have been unbearable. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, I would have found something else that I'm ashamed of, that I cannot be proud of, that I would never want to acknowledge, whatever it was, you know, something that's bad. If I had then, you know, bashed myself over the head because, shit, you're bad, Helena. Well, next opportunity to meet myself, I would be less prone to find something out. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd find something That's out and I'd continue bashing myself next time. Oh, I'd be even more. No, I really don't. I really don't think I want to look inwards anymore because it hurts because I hurt myself over what I find. Um, so if I hadn't learned how to do gentle, I would not have gotten anywhere near the amount of insight into myself that I have gotten. Mm -hmm. And I'm far from proud of everything, you know, it's, that's not it, but I see it. It is a part of me. Mm -hmm. What can I do with it? How can I deal with it? You know, how do I, how do I live my life in such a way that I'm acting out of what I feel is this is what serves me and others around me rather than being reactive because I'm ashamed or I'm afraid or this and that, just pushing things down within me. And you just know it's going to start to boil really heavily, you know, yeah. sometime soon, because whatever you push down will come up. It finds a way you push out, down yeah. even more, even more, even more. And then just, you know, one day that, it's like a pressure cooker, right? Yeah. It's gonna pop. Yeah, it's fascinating to th yeah, think that the gentleness is required at the to to create that foundation for the self exploration and self compassionate yeah. discovery and all of that. And then the gentleness is also what you're creating more of as you do that. Um so yeah, I wonder what do you have any thoughts on what the antidote to the epidemic of harshness <laughs> or any elements of that antidote? Well, so, so one is, you know, I, one is doing what I try to do, which is again, share my stories, share this fact, share my insights, share my, you know, in a sense, putting a few stories out there that somebody might go, oh, that sounds just like me, but wait, she did something that I don't usually do. What if? Um, and then I've, I, you could probably say I've, I've like 
dabbled in different types of antidotes. Uh, in a sense, I was very involved in um, in a school movement here in in Sweden that was called Skolvård and the School Spring, asking why school, which was kind of one way to you know again asking what's the purpose. Mm-hmm. Why do we do this that we do? Not on a detail level, but on that high level scale. You can ask that of anything, yeah. um, which is also, I think, a way to, uh, well, you actually push quite a lot of buttons doing it too. Mm-hmm. I had teachers go, you cannot question school. I'm going, What? Of course I can question school. It's a system. It's a man-made system. Learning, I would say, is, you know, it's inherently human. We learn. Yeah. It's not up for question because we do. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to sit here and speak to each other because we wouldn't be able to know how to speak, yeah. right? So we learn, but school. But, of course, that was her insecurities. So That's interesting, yeah. Um. But I don't know. I I notice that me me doing gentle to me and being quite open that I am gentle to me, um, you know, sharing the incidents when it really makes a big difference is probably my my way, the way I use mostly. Um, yeah. Yeah, so sort of the personal level, I suppose. It's the yeah. on the personal level, and then it, you know, it's like it ripples. There's a yeah. ripple effect there, because I, because I can, you know, I have learned how to do gentle with me, which means I do much more gentle towards my kids, towards my colleagues. Towards people that I'm friends with on social media, to you know, it's like it ripples. Yeah. Um, which means that somebody then might go, hmm, "What if I?" And yeah. then they start a rippling effect, and then that you know, so it does ripple. So I can tell that it influences. You know, it is individual. It is family. It is larger family, extended family, it is the neighborhood, it is the organizations, it's the work, I'm, you know, it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Everybody makes a difference because we bring energy with us wherever we are. Mm -hmm. So what is the energy I'm bringing? Is it worthy of being like, if it's infectious, which it is, is it Mm -hmm. worthy of being like spread? Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose yeah, coming back to where you're talking about the the epidemic of harshness and that anxiety certainty thing, that's just what is spreading as the almost the loudest energy collectively. You know, culture is created by by that energy, by the I guess the the things that people are focused on and prioritizing and yeah. and talking about and um, and the yeah behaviors that we do as individuals that then collectively become something um yeah something bigger and because we'd had a chat last week i was trying to remember if we we talked about it but the um uh the the kind of idea of sharing with people when things are going well for you or like you're kind of feeling good about things and thinking about you know 2020 was kind of talked about as objectively this this terrible year like you know obviously it had <laughs> some terrible things in it mm. um but it, it almost became this this prevailing uh it's a story yeah the, the the narrative the story that we would tell yeah. was is 2020 is the worst year ever and so if you were to say well actually I've had there's some been some really good things and like this has happened and I've actually quite enjoyed a lot of elements of that like pandemic and you know lockdown and everything um like you feel like I can't I can't say that because that's not the that's not the shared you're story. not supposed to exactly um and actually by 
not sharing that, it ramps up the whole negative story and yeah. doesn't allow for the for the nuance, for the yeah. complexity of no, actually it's been a very mixed year for everyone, pretty much. Like it's there is no so such I, thing as a terrible just Precisely. And so I actually did not stay silent. I did write. Every year I write kind of a summary a summary blog post of the year. You know, right. what what have I seen? What's you know, highlights and lowlights and, and everything in between. Hmm. I wrote that 2020 has been one of, if not the best year of my life. Right. Which in no way means that there hasn't been tragic deaths and and you know loss of life limb limbs work you know all of that that happens that happens every year Mm. as well right but because i think what you're saying is so important it is this fact that we get more of that which we focus on So when I was hard on myself, listening to my inner dictators, what did I get more of? Inner dictatorship and and ever 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 more harshness, right? I don't listen to them anymore. Those aren't the voices in my head. They're not there. Mm. So being quite careful of the words we use to describe ourselves or our experience etc is so crucial yeah yeah it's crucial as you say yeah for ourselves isn't it and the story we tell ourselves about our own life that can reinforce if i see it if i focus on this or see everything through the lens of those inner dictators then that is the direction my life's going to take and then also within the within the collective, how we, how we talk about like who we surround ourselves with and how we talk about the world with those people that we surround ourselves with, how, how we allow them to talk about things like, is it, is it this kind of catastrophizing this all or nothing black and white fear mongering? Yeah. Or can we find some, some other ways of, of looking at it, even in those, in the pain, in the things that are, are really difficult and really hard and really tragic can we find a way through that together to look at it in a in a way that actually helps us um and we can i was reminded just a couple of weeks ago my eldest you know she she sends me a text on messenger saying can i show you some videos yeah sure come and she's 21 um she came down sat on the sofa with me and and pressed play on a on a video from i think america's got talent might have been britain's got talent but i think america's got talent and it was this choir of nurses i think from a new york hospital or well whatever that had come together a year ago because their work was so hard Mm. they were seeing people dying left and right and they were helpless it's like what can we do how can we do this how can we manage to you know not fall into that energy so they had started a choir and they sang and it was just you know it's like i always cry put on any America's Got Talent or Britain's Got Talent clip and I'll cry. Um, but it was it was just that. It's like in the midst of this horror, there is love, there is connection, there is hope, there is humanity, you know, if we look for it, it is there. It is, you know, you don't have to go anywhere to get it. It's there. Yeah. Always and already, it is there. You just have to be open to it. Um, I thought that was a, a great reminder of, of just that. It's like mm. we need to make sure that we feed ourselves with things that nourish us, be that food, drink, 
what we watch on TV, the friends we keep, the way I move my body outside in the sun, whatever it is, we need to make sure that we nourish ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like feeding myself pesticides, right? Mm. If the only thing I watch online is hatred and, and, you know, racism and sexism and, you know, just sewage. Yeah. What am I? It's like, okay, I'll, I'll take a drink of pesticide right now. It's like, mm. no, <laughs> you know, don't. It's sprayed on a lot of things anyway. So you actually have to be quite careful and rinse things off, you know, mm. be, be vigilant about what, what is your intake? What do you take in? Which is also a way of doing gentle towards oneself. Mm. You know, what do, what do I feed myself? Yeah. yeah. And finding ways to rinse off things before you take them in. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's one of the things with Twitter, isn't it? Of like, it, I, I find it's be, like, there's, there's all the statement stuff that that we've kind of talked about already and there's a lot of stuff about things that you know are are true and issues around the world and things but it just it can be so draining to mm-hmm. just have a bath in all of that stuff and to just and you end up just feeling feeling hopeless helpless and i guess disempowered like drained by it all yeah. um yeah. And yeah, it's a, it's a difficult, like I'm always looking on, on Twitter for where can, can I, is, are there people that you can follow who don't just constantly kind of like retweet or, or share things that are, is that things that are wrong with the world um, and reasons they're outraged and all of that stuff. And I, I honestly don't know. Like I'm really struggling. But there are, there are some great people on Twitter, but yeah. I think because of the way that it's maybe it's it's the means of of engaging with it, um, because obviously with algorithms and stuff, it's things everything that rises to the top are the things that cause the outrage and the extreme emotional responses. Um, so. Yeah. But but so this is interesting. I have um I don't know 12 13 14 whatever years ago. I woke up in the middle of night and just, you know, boing, I had gotten the meaning of my life is to make a positive imprint. Mm-hmm. I got up it was like 3:30 in the morning. I sat down and I lit a little candle. I was writing and stuff and just whoo, this was so mm-hmm. great. And that is still with me. It's like, I want to make a positive imprint. And then, I don't know, 2014, 15, something, I was working with, with a school project, you can say, on a, on a national scale, you know, inspiration and just thank you, Spian, right? Mm-hmm. One of the people in there, he, um, he sent me a text saying, I see what you're doing on social media. And I really appreciate it. And I went, what is it that you see? You know, could you tell me more? And he said, I see that you're very, very deliberate with what you share. You share things and with comments from me in such a way as to actually make that positive imprint. He didn't use the word positive imprint, but it was like validation for me that I I I think very carefully before I share anything that is part of that. It's negative. It's bad. It's hopeless. It's worthless. Everybody sucks. Everything sucks. Mm. You know, humanity is dying. Stuff. Yeah. Not because there's not value in it, but because there is enough of that. Yeah. You know, I don't also have to. Um, add to that so i can share something else which is interesting on twitter because i've when i started twitter now i i followed like 
I don't know, 1600 people, a lot of Swedes and a lot of school people. So I was, I was going through, I was ditching those. I'm following those because I wanted something else on Twitter this time. And now I've been experimenting with following again. So now I am up to, you know, I follow, I, I got it down to 300 people, I think. And now yeah. I follow a thousand people again or something, just wildly following mm. because I want the flow. Now I'm at that stage again where I'm actively defollowing, unfollowing people because I see that what they're bringing onto Twitter is not what nourishes me. Mm. And I don't need that, which again, does not mean that I ignore hardships or, yeah. you know, injustice or, or any of that. That's not what I'm saying, but I can choose how, when, where, and by whom I take that in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you've, that you've just highlighted the, I suppose that conflict that you might experience, which is to feel like, well, if I'm, if I'm deliberately unfollowing people who share these things that we all need to know about or whatever, then I'm, uh, kind of burying my head in the sand or um, not seeing the truth and actually what you said about there's enough people like that stuff will will get its way anyway. to you yeah exactly you will see it yeah and yeah, it's, it's a, interesting it's a way of taking responsibility and i suppose it's it's giving yourself the nourishment to be able to to feed into your what you share the most helpful and nourishing stuff that you can give out to others yeah yeah i mean in a sense everything i share is curated by me yeah right but i don't curate it in such a way that i only share my highest successes mm -hmm. right i can share hard stuff i can share sad stuff i can share intimate stuff i can share revelatory stuff you know the thrills and highlights you know i can share all of that and i do deliberately try to share all of that yeah. right so that it's not a oh this is again all those pink fluffy clouds it's like that's not what i want to portray i want to portray life mm -hmm. this is life for me However, I have come to a place where you can throw a shitty experience at me and I will learn from it mm. and I will remain gentle towards me in it. I've written a few pieces that I haven't shared publicly yet. I've, I've been on Badoo, uh, you know, online dating app for since April or something. And man, am I learning stuff. Which, thanks to me being gentle, is just that. It is nourishing, even though it's been some, some really hard experiences that, had they happened 20 years ago, man, I would have beaten myself up. My inner dictators would have had a field day upon field day, right? Mm. Now it's like, this happened, and boy, am I grateful for it, because I learned this, this, and this about myself. Um, so like, every, you know, again, there's a filter, everything I share is filtered through something, but I get to control that filter. Yeah. So I don't have to be, you know, giddy with joy. If there's a national crisis, I can share my joy and I can write something about it right. because this is happening. I feel it's important to share my piece of joy right now. Mm. You know, like the nuance of it, right? Yeah. 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 I like that. That kind of the filter, you're in charge of your filter. You get to choose what goes through incoming that. and outgoing right exactly both yeah. of them i get yeah. to i get to choose it's my yeah. choice it's nobody else's yeah. everybody else does this that does not matter i have a choice yeah. i do 
Um, okay. Cool. Well, um, yes, we've reached uh, <laughs> the magic hour. The magic hour. I, I can't believe how fast it's gone. Um, yeah. But yeah, we will. I've got a load of other things that I really wanted to talk about, but we will have to do this again at some point. Um, I would you, love to do this like again. That, that'd be yeah. great. I cool. would. Um, well, Helena, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Where can people go to yeah, find out more and connect with you? To find me, the easiest way is is perhaps the hardest. No, it isn't. <laughs> Tankespian.com. T-A-N-K-E-S-P-J-A-R-N.com. Tankespian. Uh, or, you know, if you Google Helena Roth, actually, I am one of the first peoples to come up. Mm-hmm. So you'll find me. You are. I can testify to that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Cool. Well, thank and, you. And yeah, and you know, it's been so great to have this conversation with you. I love it. The meandering conversation. I love them. Well, I hope you found that nourishing and enjoyable, as nourishing and enjoyable as I found it to be involved in that conversation. I hope you found it just as much that to listen to. It was really nice to speak with Helena and just flow with that kind of meandering vibe (laughs) with the conversations. I've been really loving um, doing that with guests lately. And a few people have commented to say, you know, they've they've been enjoying the people that that have been on the show and the kind of the nature of the uh, the um, the conversations that we've been having. Um, so that's really it's, it's something I kind of was consciously aware of wanting to work on at the start of this year. Um, I can't quite define what the desire was, but but I wanted to go from I guess doing interviews or thinking of these conversations as interviews, where I would you know have a really like uh, you know a bunch of preset pre written questions that I'd want to ask. Um, and and kind of hit like point by point to more of a an organ, or organic format where you know I've I've got a structure that I want to follow. There are things that I want to explore, but it's more conversational and carries more of a spirit of of exploration, which can you know veer off in different directions rather than being that I guess preset route where you know you're following I've got to hit these flags I want to talk about this and talk about that I think it appealed to me because it kind of carries the capacity and the possibility for a more collaborative creative outcome I guess it's nice to think that we might cover ground that hasn't been covered by either of us before in the way that we can cover it together so to make it that that kind of more um yeah that organic coming together of the two of us um, anyway, do go and check out tankesbjarn.com. It's T-A-N-K-E-S-P-J-A-R-N.com. Uh, say hello to Helena there. Uh, connect with her on Twitter and Instagram. She's active in both of those places um, and has loads and loads of really lovely stuff to share with the world, to share with you. I'll catch you again next time. And until then, do remember that you are an artist. The world needs your art. Now go and make somebody's day. Bye-bye.